all eyes are watching and we've got to go out there and perform and prove what we can do to them. How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. We are back after having a few days break and the first piece of news involves Erling Haaland and a potential move to one of the big clubs in Spain. And last piece of news involves Arsenal and reports are suggesting that Ainsley Maitland-Niles will be leaving Arsenal in the summer. I represent my fucking self. How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. That's right. So, of course, we are back after having a couple of days break. And um, I think it's pretty obvious why we have taken the break. Um, because the news about Claude um, a couple of days ago that, um, of course, he has sadly um, passed away. And um, I felt it was the right thing to do. And I needed the time myself um, to just think and gather my thoughts and... Um, I've known Claude a very, very, very long time now. Even before AFTV, um, the same as Ty. I've been on, you know, coach trips to Arsenal away games. And, you know, I've been asked by so many people, are they the same, you know, off camera and everything? And trust me, they are. And, um, yes, I don't know what to say still. It's still kind of taking me back a bit. It's kind of left me with a million and one thoughts in my mind and people will know that me and Claude you know we didn't always see eye to eye should we say and you know we always had our differences and there was a video that I shared on social media a few days ago where it's the first time I've actually seen it and Claude was referring to me as like a younger version of him so like-minded was so stubborn and I have so many thoughts in my mind when I think about the situation between me and him at the moment. And obviously, you know, he's got his thoughts on Arteta and I've got mine. And he took exception to some of the things that I said um, and whether it, you know, actually involved him and whether I was referencing, you know, Claude as one of the rats, shall we say, um, which I wasn't. Um, and the one thing that I live with, you know, regret and I look at is that I never actually went to him and tried to make the peace with that side of things to, you know, make it clear that I wasn't referencing him and, you know, we should leave it at that. And the reason why I didn't is because, first and foremost, I'm stubborn. Claude's also stubborn. And... I always just looked at it like, you know what, when we go back to football, I'll see him. Nine times out of ten, we're sitting next to each other at away games and stuff like that. So I'll just sort it out then. You know, I'm not going to get into any arguments with him. And that's why you never saw me reacting on social media. No, you know, tit for tat, to in and fro in between the pair of us or anything else. It was just, I'll see him at a game. And we'll end up laughing together and just sorting it out like we always did. And that was the thing. And he had a heart of gold, man. I just... Yeah, I just... Oh, man. I just... You never know what's around the corner. And you just... Never wait. Never, never think, you know what, I'll see him one day at such and such or whatever, because that one day may never come along. And, you know, you've got to live with that. And, um, yeah, there was, like I said, there were so many good memories, so many good times, so many, you know, funny stuff, and so many years of highs and lows, and what will always be, you know, the main thing is that we loved Arsenal Football Club. That is the passion. That is what drove us to have the highs and the lows and, you know, the debates and everything else. And that is the beauty of football. But I just, I'm, I'm staggered, man. I'm just stunned. I'm just, you know, when I got the phone call, I just, just couldn't believe it. 
and you know now the time has passed a couple of days you can kind of look back at some of those good moments you can try and remember those good times and you can try and remember the laughs and you know forgetting to turn his microphone off and going to the toilet and everybody could hear him on a live stream to doing quizzes and <laughs> Oh, trust me, man, there were some funny ones, some really funny times in there as well. And, you know, the moments as well that people won't know about. They won't know about the stuff that happened behind the scenes and the support. And, you know, and I'm not on about just towards Claude, but on my side, you know, when my son was having a boxing match, Claude messaged him, wishing him luck. You know, when he's recovering from an injury, Claude would message him, wish him luck. You know, somebody that always thought about somebody else and... Yeah, those kind of things people don't see because it's not in the public domain. And there's a lot of things that people won't see because they're not in the public domain. And um, yeah, man, just a sad day. And um, he will always be the godfather of AFTV, the, the man that opened up so many pathways to so many of us. And um, so many moments that will become legendary, to be honest with you. The... The milk that went stale. Time to go. <laughs> I don't think I will ever say that phrase ever without replicating his voice. If you say time to go, I'm sure I'm not the only person that will say it in his voice. It's time to go. It's... Yeah, man. I can't really say much more, man. Um, I just hope he's... He's in a better place. He's at peace. And um, all you can say is that you, you know, you hope he rests in peace. And um, yeah, it's going to leave a big hole for everybody, whether you agreed, disagreed or whatever it was. And um, yeah, that's why I needed a couple of days. And um, yeah, it's a tough one, man. Tough one. Despite the differences. can't say much more so yeah um we'll get on to today's show and uh first piece of news involves erling Haaland and um his representatives um Raiola, in fact <laughs> oh, he must be loving this um he's visited barcelona and real madrid for talks the most sought after striker in world football um, I think it's going to be between him and Kylian Mbappe as to, you know, take over the throne from Ronaldo and Messi. Um, but Raiola and his father, um, Alfie Inga Haaland, um, flew to Spain um, initially for talks with Barcelona. Um, of course, um, Juan Laporta has been elected as Barcelona president and he would have outlaid you know the plans and everything else um and then they're um on their way to madrid where they're going to outlay their plans and um no doubt there's going to be more interested clubs there'll be teams in the premier league manchester city in particular i'm not sure that manchester united can live with these teams that are involved in the kind of money that's being thrown around and also the ambition with all due respect um they certainly got the name. They've certainly got the status as one of the biggest clubs in world football. It's whether Haaland believes the project is there. And, um, you know, his father, he played for Manchester City. So um, don't write that one off and think that Man City are a small club in terms of their stature, not what they're doing on the pitch. There could be that, um, you know, that factor involved. And... Um, yeah, wherever he goes, he's um, he's going to cost a lot of money. Um, but they're saying that, um, you know, it's a release clause, in fact, and it's £66 million. So, yeah, it's a lot of money. But when you think what you're getting, no. Nah. Um, but his release clause apparently comes into effect in 2022. So it's actually in a year's time. So if anybody wants him now, let me get this right then it would probably cost you in excess of a hundred million pound easily. But if you want to wait it out for a year, then in the summer of 2022, 
Um, so one more season effectively once we've got this bit out of the way. Um, he's going to have a £66 million release clause. That's staggering. So I suppose Dortmund are looking at it and saying, you know what, if we can get some money now, notoriously brilliant at getting ridiculous figures um, for players as well. I think they'll sell. But um, interesting to see where he would possibly go. Um, last piece of news involves Arsenal and reports are suggesting that Ainsley Maitland-Niles has resolved um, his uh, future and will leave Arsenal in the summer uh, with the on-loan midfielder accepting that uh, prospective Premier League clubs see him as a right-back um, and not a midfielder. Of course, this has been a talking point throughout his time at Arsenal. And ultimately... I think this is why he's um, not going to have a future at Arsenal. And I feel that it's kind of his own doing, to be honest with you. Um, he was recently involved in um, the England setup for the last five internationals, I believe it was. But he's been left out of the squad for this one. So it just shows how quickly, you know, you can go in and out. And um, he's obviously gone to West Brom relegated they're not going to get out of that it would have been a great story if he could have gone there and helped them but it isn't to be um but the biggest problem is maitland niles considers himself um as a midfielder um, and he expected to demonstrate his ability in that position um when he went to west brom and um i just like i said i just think that he's missed a trick you know before cedric came along at arsenal there was just Hector Bellerin as the out-and-out right-back. Hector ends up picking up, you know, the ACL injury. And Maitland-Niles has an opportunity to go and play as the right-back of Arsenal Football Club. Do you remember when Saka first burst onto the scene? He was given these opportunity because of injuries and he played left-back. He didn't moan. Didn't look like it was a chore. It was like, play left-back playing for Arsenal, going to grab it with both hands. It never felt like that was the way with Maitland-Niles. It always felt like, mm, yeah, well, you know, I'll kind of go there, but <sighs> can't really be bothered. And It was inconsistent. And I felt that he had a huge opportunity to nail down his spot. He could have really, really established himself and became an unbelievable right-back. And then we wouldn't assign Cedric. Nobody would have been worrying about, you know, Hector when he came back because he wouldn't have got in. And I just feel we missed a trick, a massive trick. So um, ultimately, that's probably why he will go. We could have got £20 million pound for him um, last summer with Wolves. There will be interested suitors. There is the homegrown factor and everything as well. But I don't think you're going to get that £20 million, pound, probably around about 10 15 if I'm honest. So we've lost some money. And um, I do think that is one that will happen. So there we go. That is it for today's DT's Daily. Um, of course, a uh, huge game um, tomorrow um, against Liverpool. Massive game. And there's going to be a preview for that later on um, this evening. Um, I will be back on AFTV for the watch-alongs. And um, yeah, huge game. Huge game. But we will talk about that. Um, in more detail for the uh, preview and the predicted lineup and everything else. So if you're new around here, make sure you hit the subscribe button, smash a like on this video, and I will see you a lot soon. I'm out of here.